looking at an insight into Psalms 73 and seeing what Asaph, the writer, somebody had had, uh, had the, uh, I don't know whether there was anything to it or not. Somebody said that maybe he wrote for David in this Psalms, but I'm, I'm not favored to that. It, uh, translators have inserted the chapter heading, so it says the Psalm of Asaph, and he's the choir leader down at the temple over the congregational singing. And so we had a problem with the wicked for a time till they went into the sanctuary. And so we can put ourselves there. We're wondering sometimes when we see the prosperity of the wicked seem like they go right on and don't have no trouble. And we wonder how long will God put up with this wicked world and all the wickedness that goes goes on but I've read the book I read the book the early hours this morning that the wickedness of men and wickedness will come to a end and I'm telling you to a very end when God brings judgment and he always brings judgment upon sin you can count on that but anytime, anytime we read Psalm 73, we're not only seeing as Asaph saw the prosperity of the wicked, but we're seeing looking down at the persecutions of the godly. Yes, you and I that are saved, we wonder why is it the godly have to suffer like they do? Well, we're not complaining. We're not uh, we're not uh, getting against God and condemning God for things ain't the way we'd like to have them be. But God's got a reason for His people to suffer. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 still in this King James Bible when he said as Paul penned it down and we know that all things, not some things, but all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose and we're in God's eternal purpose I'll tell you that's a place that God has positioned us that are saved we're in his eternal purpose and not one thing passes God without his knowledge I tell you without he knows what's going on and knows how to handle what we're going through. He'll give enough grace for us to get through whatever we're going through with. Amen. Well, we're going to pray and read a little bit more in Psalm 73 to get us started. And I've labeled this message, and this is the third message on the insight into Psalms 73. Father, we thank you again on this Lord's Day for the opportunity, Lord, to come to this local New Testament church, this assembly, Lord, this meeting house, Lord, to come within the walls of this church. And Lord, we're thankful for this nice facility, Lord, that we can come in out of the heat and, uh, Lord, a comfortable place to sit down and shut out the world and let us let us, Lord, on this day, take in, Lord, your blessed word. Lord, give us a heart right now in the quietness of this hour. Lord, to receive, as James says, the engrafted word, which receive it with meekness. Lord, the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. And Lord, you give us enough, Lord, even in Psalm 73, Lord, to help our hearts, Lord, in these days of adversity, in these days when we're so quick to question and wonder about a lot of things, we're thankful, Lord, for the hope we have, Lord, in your blessed word. And I do pray as we read and bring this message, Lord, you'll press it on every heart and do that I please him. And I'll praise ye for that which ye do in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Now reading Psalms chapter 73. And for sake time, we're just going to read a few verses to get started. And we're going to read verse 1 down through verse 4. 
And then we're going to jump down to uh, verse number 13 and read through verse 17. And here is it really in all essence the failure of the slipping. That's what we're I'm trying to drive to and hope I can get a little bit on the, the last end. And I tried to last weekend and we didn't get there. But we're going to try it again today. But we're reading Psalm 73 verse 1 through 4. And Asaph writing under inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And he has a perspective of humanity involved in this chapter. And before it ends, he has a perspective of the heavenly. Amen. But he said in verse 1, truly, that means for sure. Surely God is good to Israel, even to the such as are of a clean heart. And Asep said, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. And so on down in this chapter now, following verse 4, we're going to uh, we will pick up on the, from the last lesson the attributes of the godless. Say, a, the, the faultiness of the sinful is right here. And he goes on a long list of things their pride and their prosperity and their portion and their pretensions and on down the list. But picking up now with verse 13. And Asep said, Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain, and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, I was, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Now to get the gist of this message again on this day, kind of just rewording it some a little bit on this day for our last two lessons. And as I've labeled this message an insight in Psalm, in the Psalms chapter 73. And if you'll listen even to this message on this day, how you'll read Psalm 73 different than you've ever have read it. And we've saw the assurances of God's goodness in verse number one. Amen. The assurances of the God's goodness. Looking at the faithfulness of the, the sovereign. That's Almighty God Himself. And I, I use this word assurances when I look at this word truly. It stands out to me. Every word stands out. And God uh, sure is a faithful God. He's true and Faithful to his attributes, who he is, and, and what he is, his omnipresence, he's all present, uh, his omnisapience, he's all wisdom, uh, his omni, uh, his omnipotence, he's all powerful, amen, his omniscience, he's all knowing, and I, I started on this day to. I go back in that Old Testament uh, uh, passages of Scripture and look at a lot of these uh, uh, father and uh, uh, father combinations of names uh, uh, that are mentioned in the Old Testament Scriptures to go along. But we're not going to do that on this day. But I'm seeing in verse 1 the assurances of uh, God's goodness. Amen. 
and accredited his his goodness accredited to us that are in this house on this day and here's a way i'm going to start it on this day and in romans chapter number two and verse four in this authorized king james bible and here paul's going to talk to us about how god judges and who he judges, amen, as he started this Roman epistle. But in Romans chapter 2 and verse 4, and I'm thumbing there and I'll be there in just a second. And he said in verse 2 of Romans chapter 2, and he said, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. And he said, against them which commit such thing. And he's writing to, to both classes of people, Jew or Gentile, all are guilty alike, I'm telling you. And here he said, And thankest thou this O man that judges them which do such things, that thou shalt escape, doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. And when we look at verse 1 and look at the assurances of God's goodness, I we see this goodness accredited out of you and I that are saved. Amen. Had not God been good to us, uh, we'd no doubt be in hell on this day. Uh, I'm telling you, in the charred walls of a Christless hell, uh, but God was good to us. Amen. Uh, all His good grace and good mercy, uh, uh, His goodness and long suffering. Uh, Second Peter three verse nine. Uh, I said, the Lord is not slack concerning His uh, promises, uh, but is long suffering to usward, uh, not willing that any should perish. Uh, but all come to repentance. Uh, and a lot of folk got the wrong idea of God. Uh, they think He's an angry God running back and forth in heaven with His fist broad uh, and, and set on. Uh, but I remind you on this day, uh, He's a good God, uh, <coughs> a God of grace uh, and a God of glory. I'm going to have to get a swig of water. But anyway, Peter said uh, he's not slack concerning his promises, uh, but is long suffering to usward, uh, not willing that any should perish, uh, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, uh, First Timothy chapter number two uh, uh, says in verse four, "Who would have all men uh, uh, to be saved and come?" Uh, to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. And I'm glad that God is a good God. His goodness accredited to us. All the goodness of God that led us to repentance. And I've read the end of the book in Revelation chapter 16. When God sends His awful wrath on a Christ-rejecting world. And they just absolutely absolutely uh, uh, rebel yet more uh, and blaspheme His name. Uh, oh, I'm telling you, God being good to man won't draw, I tell you, God being angry with man won't draw man to God. It's His goodness. Amen. Uh, and so we see um, as we look at the assurances of uh, His goodness, uh, God's goodness, uh, not only accredited to us, uh, but His goodness accompanying us. Amen. Oh, we go down through life's way uh, and we wonder sometimes 
Where are you, God? Uh, Job got in that place. Uh, he looked uh, looked behind him uh, and looked on both sides of him, uh, and he said, "I don't, I don't see you, God. I don't sense your presence." Uh, but the Lord said, "Job, uh, well, I'm telling you, God had His hand on Job." Amen. Uh, he said, uh, I th- "That when thou art t- tried, I'll bring thee." Forth as go. Amen. He know Job said he know the way I take. And when he had tried me, uh, he shall bring me forth as go. Uh, and so this goodness of God uh, that accompanies us. Uh, God don't run out of it on His children. Uh, even when we falter and fail. Uh, when we, we slip aside uh, and don't follow His ways. Uh, he don't give up on us. Amen. But Psalm 23 uh, and verse 6 said, uh, And the great shepherd Psalms, uh, he said, the, I Surely goodness and mercy, there it is, uh, shall follow me all the days of my life. And the psalm of David said, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Somebody said of these two, the bright-faced angels that follow God's children, all goodness and mercy. Amen. I'm preaching on this day on the assurances of God's goodness. Amen. Oh, and inside of Psalm 73 with verse 1 where where Asaph said, I truly God is good to Israel even to them which such are of a clean heart. And not only His goodness accredited to us, His goodness that led us to repentance, His goodness accompanying us, but all His goodness, I thank God, accounted to Israel. Amen. All oh, look at Romans chapter number 11 and verse number 2. And this blessed King James Bible, Paul writing three chapters devoted to God's dispensational dealings with his chosen elect Israel, the apple of his eye, his peculiar treasure. But in Romans chapter 11, oh, look at this Bible I'm preaching from on this day. And I think probably I jotted down the wrong verse. But here it is, Romans chapter number 11. And it said here in verse number 27, For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. And as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. And said, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Said, For as ye in time past have not believed God. He's talking about Gentiles right here. In verse 30, It have ye now obtained mercy through their unbelief, through Israel. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they may obtain mercy. For God had concluded them all in unbelief that He might have mercy upon all. And He said now as He winds this chapter up, and all oh, the depth of the richest bow of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. Who had known the mind of the Lord or who had being his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again, for of him, and through him, and to him, are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. And so I'm seeing uh, this goodness of God uh, accredited to us, uh, all His goodness that led us to us to repentance, uh, His goodness that accompanies us, uh, uh, His mercy and goodness uh, that follows us all the days of our life. But this uh, 
this goodness uh, accounted to, to Israel. Now look at Isaiah 63 and verse 29. And we're thumbing quite a bit on this message on this day. And I'll tell you, that's the way we learn Scripture. Amen. But look at Isaiah 63 verse 29. And Isaiah wrote this verse down as he talked about the hope of a remnant of people being Israel. And he said in Isaiah 63, and I've done fouled up, I've got the wrong verse again. But anyway, we're seeing it right here, the goodness of God in verse number 5. And Isaiah said here, and I looked and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me, and I will tread down the people in my anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and will bring down their strength to the earth. But oh, I like this verse number 7 now, as it talks about a remnant in the end time, a remnant of Israel, thank God, that will be saved in the day of the Lord. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us. And here it is. The great goodness toward the great goodness toward the house of Israel which He hath bestowed on them according to His mercies, according to the multitude of His loving kindness kindness. Here's a God that loved Israel and still loves Israel with an everlasting love. Jeremiah 31. Amen. And verse 3. Oh, he said, I've loved you with an everlasting love. Amen. And thank God that makes me know that God still got His sovereign hand upon Israel. Amen. He told Israel, I tell you, he said, I've written you on the palms of my hand. Amen. And so I'm seeing this goodness accounted to Israel. And I could go on and on with this message in verse 1. But not only do we see the assurances of God's goodness, I'm referring to the faithfulness of God Himself. But we're seeing the awareness of our goings. All oh, the failure of the slipping. And we put ourselves right here with Asaph in Psalm 73. We alike have the problem. He said in verse 3, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And Asaph had got to a place, he had to, his steps began to slip. He said, I almost slipped and fell. Oh, he, he had a problem trying to understand and take in why the wicked have go right on with their wickedness and seem to prosper and have all they want. All oh, the awareness of our Goings and we're, I'm going to say that again on uh, to end this message uh, and maybe tonight. Uh, but we're seeing now the attributes of the godless I mentioned on last Sunday. Uh, the faultiness of the sinful. Uh, right here we saw uh, in verse number, uh, the, verse 3, the prosperity of of the wicked. Look down at the text. Uh, and then we look down uh, I hear in verse 6 their pride. Uh, and then, then down in verse 8 their pervertedness or perversion. Uh, and on down the list goes. I'm telling you. Uh, I hear a people uh, uh, that he says the ungodly in verse 12 that prosper in the world. Uh, 
And surely Asaph's given us a picture of the wicked and their wickedness. Oh, I'm telling you, I, I tell you, it'll be heaven enough to get out of this wicked world and all the pervertedness and all the pride and, and all the people that's, uh, I tell you, uh, everything that man uh, has put his hands on, he's messed up. Yes, he has. Uh, and so we see the attributes of the godless. Uh, and then I noticed on the last lesson, uh, the assessment of the godly. Amen. Uh, oh, when I look at an insight in Psalm 73, uh, I'm reminded uh, that Asaph gives an assessment uh, of the godly. Uh, oh, look at it here in Psalms chapter number 73. And notice uh, what he said in Psalm 73. And I'll be there in just a moment. My eyes are playing tricks on me again on this day. But he said in Psalm 73, 28, he said, But it is good for me to draw near to God. I put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Amen. And all oh, thank God the godly. You and I that are saved by God's grace and kept by His mighty power. All oh, thank God. We can assess the godly right here in this it's chapter. Amen. Though we slip and fall like a simp did. But he said, I, I went into the end, into the sanctuary in verse 7. 17 and I understood their end and all we assembled on this hillside one more time this side of the second coming of our Lord Jesus and the world of the wicked go on and they pass this church up like a train passing up a hobo and they look down on us as fanatics and all scurring all the world they ain't got us figured out why we are God's people uh, I tell you take, uh, take the time uh, in these busy times uh, in these wicked times to come around uh, a person we've never seen uh, and believe on a person uh, we've never seen just uh, with a natural eye uh, just by simple faith and take God at His Word. Oh, to trust in the Lord. Trust in an unfailing God. Trust in a God who will hold us up. Amen. And so I'm seeing the assessment of, of the godly. The world don't figure us out. The world can't see how what we've got in our heart. Uh, and then we see the actions uh, of the grievous. Uh, I went here when Asap said uh, in verse number notice uh, in verse 21 of Psalm 73, uh, thus my heart was grieved uh, and I was pricked in my reins. Uh, so foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. And so here we're seeing that Asa, he was very grievous. His heart was vexed. Or oh, I'm telling you, that may be some of what I, what, uh, I lot the when he sat down at the gate of Sodom uh, and vexed his righteous soul uh, with the unlawful deeds of the Sodomites. Uh, and this world will rub you wrong. Amen. This world will uh, make you sick. Come to, uh, to see all that's going on. And we ain't, got, we, ain't, we ain't got the answer to, to the problem of the world other than that they can come to know the Lord Jesus uh, as their personal Savior. Uh, but Asaph got to a place uh, he was grieved hey man uh, in verse number 21 uh, and then we see the absoluteness uh, of our good hope hey man uh, all look at it in, and I'm trying to race through this message to get a first point on our last subject we're going to address tonight the Lord willing but in verse 23 nevertheless I am continually with thee thou hast holden me up by thy right hand thou shalt guide me with thy counsel 
and afterward receive me to glory whom have I in heaven but thee and there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee and if you remember I said this chapter gives us two perspectives we've talked about the human perspective looking at humanity the wicked that's without God the wicked that are in the world and unsaved and how they go strung on out with their sin and seem to love it and get by but they're not getting by but now we're seeing a change in Psalm 73 we're seeing a perspective of the heavenly or the writer said whom have I in heaven but the question and he said there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee amen and I've labeled this the absoluteness of our good hope Amen. All uh, oh, let us on this day, uh, let us get our focus off the world and what the world's doing uh, and trying to figure out why the world goes on like they are. Get our focus upon the Lord Jesus. Amen. He's our good hope. Amen. Uh, thank God He's a hope. Uh, in us. Amen. Colossians 1.23 Paul said Christ in you the hope of glory. Amen. All oh, that will set your heart aright. Amen. When you can't figure out what's going on in this Christless world that we're living in. Oh thank God for a hope that is in us. Literally God's presence in the person of His Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hope in a Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. When I get down and discouraged, I tell you, when I turn my face to the wall and it seems God is nowhere around, thank God. I can encourage myself knowing I've got a hope in me. Amen. And then we've got a hope with us. Amen. Oh, I read Hebrews chapter 6 and, and Paul mentioned which hope we have as an anchor for the soul, both sure and steadfast. And he talks about entering within the veil where our high priest is, where our forerunners already entered. We not only got a hope in us, but we got a hope with us. Amen. Oh, thank God. If you think God's turned against you and left you in this symbolized world to try to get along without your, without God, you better think twice because He's a God that is with us. Amen. Thank God He's entered within the veil. He's there on this Sunday morning at the right hand of God the Father, the great high priest of our profession, and one that can be touched with the filling of our infirmities one who cannot be terminated one who is truly right amen oh thank god a god that is at the at the very rescue of his children amen i know the world would throw us out and they seem like uh, i seem like hey, i really want to do that in these days uh, if it wasn't for god's protective hand upon god's children uh, the devil in this worldly crowd uh, no doubt would try to get rid of us uh, but i'm glad we've not only got a hope in us uh, we've got a hope with us. Amen. And oh, thank God uh, I hear the, uh, the psalm is writing about uh, the absoluteness of our good hope. Amen. And I read it to you here. Uh, all His presence. Amen. Oh, to guide us. And He said, afterward receive me to glory. Amen. And thank God not only a hope in us uh, and a hope with us but a hope beyond us amen oh thank god on this day there's hope for the future for the child of god 
our prospects look great on this day because we have the hope of heaven. Amen. And I'm almost come to a close with this message. But I'm seeing the absoluteness of our good hope as we see an insight in Psalm 73. It ain't all gloom and doom in Psalm 73. Thank God here's the brightness. I thank God the joy that comes to God's child. And amongst all that we go through in this life, life. There's a hope beyond us. Amen. And I say it this way in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 and Peter said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath given us a, a, a living hope, a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible uh, undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation uh, all of it's right there amen all uh, our preservation who are kept Amen. Uh, our reservation. He's reserved for us uh, a future place. Amen. Uh, or oh, a living hope uh, by the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ. That assures my heart. Amen. Not only is He in us, uh, Christ in us, the hope of glory, uh, hope with us. Thank God. He's our high priest, uh, the immutable God. All uh, oh, that we have assured and steadfast hope but he's a hope beyond us amen the absoluteness of of our good hope and then here's the acceptance of the goodly and I gave it to you in the last verse and will not comment on that but but last but not least now and we'll pick it up Lord willing tonight looking at this uh, this um failure of slipping as we will examine verse 2 in an end term message tonight but this last point the accomplished end of the godly lessness the accomplished end of the godlessness oh you can be sure there's coming an end to all the wickedness oh yes you you better believe it I'm telling you I've read this book and and here the psalmist went into the sanctuary he went into the temple thank God no doubt he was doing the leading of the singing and all there was no doubt a lot of these psalms were, were sung in olden times and he said, I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I then understood I their end. And it makes sense, I'm telling you. The wicked's going to come to an end. I'm telling you. You better well believe they're going to come to an expected end end. Oh yes uh, Proverbs 14 12 said uh, there is a way that seemeth right unto men but the end there are are the ways of death and God always brings judgment. Amen. You can count on a God that will bring judgment upon wicked. Psalm 9 17 said the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations uh, that forget God. Now Lord willing tonight we're going to pick it up and I have several of these uh, that I want to mention uh, and talk about this uh, uh, proof of slipping. All this proof uh, and I said the word slip means to step aside or Get, get off course. Uh, I tell you to get out of the way of which the path that we should be traveling. And I, I say there's several reasons, several signs uh, that are significant that points to our slipping away from God. And I'll mention these and we'll close a message and deal with it, Lord willing, tonight. Uh, signs that we're slipping when sin doesn't bother us. Signs that we're slipping when Satan doesn't battle us. Signs that we're slipping when sinners 
don't burden us. Signs that we're slipping when separation don't become us. Signs that we're slipping when the scriptures don't build us. Signs that we're slipping when self, and I'm talking about the selfishness of flesh, doesn't belittle us. Signs that we're slipping when serving God doesn't beckon us. And last but not least, signs that we're slipping when the second coming we don't behold. All these things are, are proof, scriptural proof, that we are slipping away from God. Well,